Nearly 45 million years ago, the Indian tectonic plate collided with Eurasia. The union between these earthen pieces bore giants, the Himalayas. These soaring temples of stone would decide the fate of billions of humans for millions of years. The Himalayan earth, wrapped by the highest winds in the world, would give birth to water. Glaciers turned into rivers that turned into goddesses as Indians began to worship these daughters of the Himalayas. The great mountains would breathe the monsoon winds across the subcontinent as each exhale and inhale covered the soil and greenery. Fertile river basins would flourish as different cultures thrived in this petri dish of geography, which would eventually evolve into civilization. Soon enough, altars of sacred fire would dot the landscape. Some chanted a magical tongue around this fire. Others emblazoned the fire on their bodies as ascetics draped in saffron robes journeyed across the subcontinent, seeking and teaching. Places became pilgrimages. The dirt became divine. Under the shadow of the Himalayas, its rivers and its beauty, India was born. There are very few things more impactful in the world than the Himalayas, whether via geography, climate, or humanity. And it's not just India or Asia that was impacted by their formation, but the entire world. Today, we're going to explore these majestic mountains, the titanic forces that led to their birth and their impact on everything. So we have to start way back, like way, way, way back. Okay, maybe not that far back. To understand the Himalayas, we have to go back to when the world was one, the supercontinent of Pangaea. The earth back then and even now is made up of tectonic plates, basically sections of the earth's crust that move independently grinding against one another due to volcanic churn deeper in the earth's body. By chance, pretty much all of the major tectonic plates with above ocean land combined into Pangaea around 335 million years ago. Then 200 million years ago, we saw the world's greatest breakup when Pangaea split into two. Two mega continents would be born. North America, Europe, and most of Asia would form Laurasia, which drifted to the north, while South America, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, Arabia, and India would form Gondwana, which drifted south. A quick 100 million years later, Gondwana would have some tectonic drama. India would break off around this time and start rapidly moving east and north, taking a 9,000 kilometer trip to collide with the Asian plate. During this 35 million year journey, the Indian plate was very eventful. Relative isolation and rapid tectonic movement meant various unique animal and plant species would find their home in India, since it was kind of a giant island. From a T-Rex-like Rajasaurus to plant-eating crocodilians in Cymosuchus to short-necked sauropods in Isosaurus, India cultivated some unique species in its isolated phase. But this honeymoon period wouldn't last too long. Okay, maybe it was like millions of years, but in prehistoric terms, that's not that long. 67 million years ago, the Indian plate would pass over an area called the Reunion Hotspot. This was a place where a massive magma plume resided underneath the Earth's crust. The plume aggravated the land in central India, now known as the Deccan. The Deccan would erupt in one of the most violent eruptions in Earth's history. Known as the Deccan Traps, 1.5 square million miles of India's surface would be covered with lava, about the size of Mongolia today. Oh, by the way, this also coincided with the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. So it was kind of like a one-two punch with both the asteroid and Deccan Traps rapidly changing Earth's climate. For many parts of the Earth, including India, it was a literal apocalypse with fire raining down from the sky and lava exploding from the Earth. Most vertebrates in India died out with a few small exceptions, like small reptiles, birds, and mammals. But just as they were evolving and reclaiming spots in India's ecosystem, something started to rise up on the horizon of the island of India. It was time for the Himalayas to be born. When you gaze at the Himalayas, something stirs in you. They're unfathomably massive. 
jagged peaks of white and black, cut across the blue sky wearing the clouds as clothes. They make you ponder as to what the world is, not just in a physical sense, but also spiritually. It's no wonder that so many great sages and yogis went here to connect with not only the divine, but themselves. These sacred structures were the result of millions of years of plate tectonics. Already before India made contact with Asia, Tibet was rising up as a massive plateau. Between 55 to 45 million years ago, we see a rapid rise on both the Indian and Tibetan sides of their respective plates. Tibet and Central Asia became even more cold and dry than they already were. Once the Himalayas reached 4,000 meters, the world's largest rain shadow began to form. Not just the Tibetan Plateau or Central Asian Steppe, but as far as Mongolia and Northern China would see increasing desertification, forming the Gobi Desert. While the northern side was arid, southern side of the Himalayas would be drenched. Wind from the south would lash against the mountains, becoming clouds and condensing into rain. This is basically how the Indian Ocean monsoon was formed. So while the north side of the Himalayas became increasingly cold and dry, the southern section of the subcontinent would become warm and wet. Both sides saw an explosion of life and ecosystems, especially the Indian side. New river valleys and microbiomes would form in between the peaks. In fact, there's evidence that back and forth movement between India and Asia created the ancestors of modern horses, whales, rhinos, and camels amongst other species to evolve. Within the Himalayas themselves, great glaciers started to form, over 15,000 of them today. From these rivers of ice, actual rivers also started to trickle into India, Tibet, Southeast Asia, and China. The Indus, the Ganga, the Brahmaputra, the Yangtze, the Yellow, and the Mekong, and many others would deposit rich silt and soil into their river basins creating a rich tapestry of life everywhere around them. Essentially, the entire climate of Asia was shaped by these great mountains. The rooftop of the world and what some call Earth's third pole. Since the Himalayas hold around 15% of the world's ice mass, trailing only the Arctic and Antarctic, 12,000 cubic kilometers of fresh water powers the rivers we mentioned prior. The Himalayas, towering above Asia, don't just hold snow, they hold life. For nearly 2 billion people. But it isn't just India or Asia that has been impacted by the Himalayas. When I said the Himalayas change everything, I really meant it. In Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, there is a belief in a cosmic mountain, Mount Meru, the spiritual axis of the world. The Himalayas are seen as its earthly embodiment. They are not just a mountain range, but the spine of the earth itself. And as the Himalayas rose, fast, fierce, and unstoppable, the earth itself began to change. The rising Himalayas bent the jet stream, shifted monsoons, and triggered ripple effects that echoed across the entire planet. One of the most surprising effects was something called chemical weathering, where rain, rock, and carbon conspire to reshape the climate. As the new monsoon rains lashed against the Himalayas, they set off a process that would cool the planet beginning around 23 million years ago. Monsoon raindrops would pick up carbon dioxide from the air on their descent, causing a chemical reaction in these drops to make something called carbonic acid. When the acid met the freshly exposed Himalayan rock, it triggered a chemical reaction, forming bicarbonate ions in the silt. These ions and silt flowed downriver into the Indian and Pacific Ocean, where tiny organisms called diatoms consumed them. When the diatoms died, they sank to the ocean floor, locking away carbon for millions of years. And as carbon was pulled from the atmosphere, the Earth began to cool, dramatically. These effects rippled far beyond the Himalayas. Antarctica used to resemble the Canadian tundra, like it was cold, but it still had some small brush and plants. However, as the Earth cooled, it became a frozen wasteland. Across the world in the northern Pacific, cooling oceans cause an explosion of kelp forests leading to new wildlife and further butterfly effects on the Pacific Ocean at large. The earth itself became more dry as a whole. The Sahara was born in northern Africa, while forests shriveled up with great grasslands replacing them. The North American prairies, Eurasian steppe, African savanna, and South American pampas all come from this great global cooling caused by the Himalayas. Consequently, 
Animal life changed with new species like horses and giant flightless birds taking over these new ecosystems. But beyond biological and geological effects, the Himalayas are much more special. There is an integral human element of them that we must explore, for they didn't just change plants, animals, the climate, and geology. They defined human civilization itself. Fundamentally, this ancient collision shaped us. When the Himalayas rose, so did the rivers. And where there are rivers, there is life. And where there is life, there are stories. The Divine Mountain Range is holy for over 2 billion people in the world. Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, and Sikhs revere the sacred peaks, many believing them to be the abode of gods. For thousands of years, yogis and ascetics traveled to the Himalayas from across the Indian subcontinent to meditate in the mountains seeking answers to life's eternal questions. They tested the limits of the human body and mind, braving freezing temperatures and lacerating winds. They would return down to the plains, sharing their knowledge and ideas, forever changing the culture of the land. People would be awestruck at places like Mount Gailash, a stunning dome-shaped mountain that is said to be the abode of Lord Shiva, destroyer of worlds. Worn in ice and carried down stone, these rivers became the lifeblood of the subcontinent. Not only watering the land, they also watered our imagination. Over millennia, people began to see in these rivers beyond just a flow of water. They saw rivers as the flow of the divine. To people who lived in the shadow of the Himalayas, they weren't simply just a boundary. They were a presence, a breathing sacred spine of the world. Here, fire was made holy. Forests became monasteries. Mountains whispered gods into the ears of men. Some of the oldest civilizations in the world would form along Himalayan rivers. Ancient Indian civilization would bloom like lotuses along the Indus, Ganga, and an extinct river called the Saraswati. The floodplains of the Ganga and Indus were some of the most fertile places on the planet. As more forest was cleared for farms, a population explosion occurred. Some of the most revered figures in the subcontinent, Ram, Buddha, Mahavir and others would live and die along the Ganga, a daughter of the Himalayas. Ideas shaped in the shade of the Himalayas would propagate across Asia. Hinduism and Buddhism particularly emanated from this region to influence places from as far as Japan to southwest Russia. But just as Himalayan water gave life to India, China, and Southeast Asia, now Himalayan ideas would give wisdom across the world. The Sanskrit word Himalaya actually means the abode of snow. Today, a lot of that snow is melting. The great glaciers of the Himalayas are retreating in their battle against climate change, with some studies claiming the Himalayan glaciers have shrunk by 40% since their peak range between 400 and 700 years ago. There are even fears of water wars emerging between states like China, India, and Pakistan. Recently, India suspended the Indus Water Treaty. Indian government has suspended the Indus Water Treaty 1960 with Pakistan. A fairly lopsided water sharing agreement towards and with Pakistan after Pakistani supported terrorists killed 26 innocent civilians in Kashmir. The Himalayas have become a battleground and a site of resource extraction in modern times. But beyond economics, geology, and biology, I think it's spirituality that's the biggest legacy of the Himalayas. You may think of them as just a bunch of big rocks, a potential mining site, or the source of a rain shadow. But once you see them, once you behold the great spires of white ice streak across the blue sky, once you feel the bone-chilling, soul-warming winds that travel from peak to peak, once you witness the yogis who have mastered the mind and body in the refuge of the Himalayas, you could sense that there's something else here. The Himalayas will continue to inch towards the sky. Their glaciers may shrink, their rivers may thin, and their peaks will shift with the ceaseless churn of the Earth's crust. But as long as there are eyes to gaze upward, minds to wander, and spirits yearning to wander beyond themselves, the Himalayas will remain more than mountains. They will be the eternal guardians of human awe.